Hey there, Wargamers, and welcome back to another Wargames Delivered video. In this video, we're going to be painting Poltergeist from Malifaux. Let's get started. Continuing our Malifaux game focus this week, uh, I'm going to switch over to Poltergeist for this video. We're going to go ahead and uh, this is kind of going to be a uh, another step upon the one that we did on the Malifaux Sorrows. Uh, these models are very similar. This one's just a little bit bigger and has a little bit more detail on the face and uh, just overall on the model. So we'll go ahead and start out much of the same way here with the orc skin and the speed paint medium, uh, going for a very thin down version of this paint and just trying to catch the recesses with the most of the shadows. And uh, we're going to go ahead and mix that eventually uh, up towards the midsection of the model. But for now, we'll go ahead and just add this to the entirety of the lower section of the model, about the lower half of the model here, as you can see. And then we'll move over into uh, blending the two speed paints together here in a moment. Uh, there's a couple more areas on this model to blend uh, your speed paints with, uh, like the where the arms meet, uh, the midsection here that we're going to do first, and uh, there's some kind of blue or purple or green, whatever color you want to make them, flames on the top of the model uh, or spirit energy, whatever it is. So we'll go ahead and cover that with this color as well. Um, but first we will go ahead and mix the uh, main midsection here before we uh, switch over to any of the arms or the back here. And working quickly here, you'll want to get uh, your Gravelord Grey out, mix that with the Speed Paint Medium, and we'll go ahead and add the normal version of the color just where it's supposed to be. Uh, we're going to kind of create a blend where the two colors meet here right in the middle, so we'll want to kind of work them together, add a little bit of the green into the grey, and just kind of mix those together as best as we can. Um, we will be going back to the regular Gravelord Grey to just finish up those details that aren't going to be mixed together, uh, but for uh, the time being, we're going to go ahead and mix uh, the Gravelord Grey that we have on our brush with the green that is on the model. Once you've got a nice transition with your blend, we can switch back over to the regular Gravelord Grey, and with this, we'll just go ahead and coat the shoulders the back and the underside of the model, the stomach here, and we'll pull this up to about the middle of the arms because uh, we're going to do the same uh, blending technique on the arms here as well. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Uh, make sure you have some wet paint uh, on the end of the arms so you have something to mix with later on. And again, just working the paint up the arms and uh, we'll go ahead and leave a little bit of a pool of paint there to mix with. As you'll see here on the model, I'm leaving a little bit of paint to work with on the edge of the arm there, where the uh, sort of spirit energy or whatever the <laughs> whatever's on this model is. So we'll go ahead and move that there, and uh, go ahead and bring that to the back of the arms. You want to hit every area of the arms, and we'll go ahead and switch over to our orc skin green, and do the same sort of blending technique, just kind of backwards this time. Uh, using the green to blend into the gray this time uh, with the spine at the back here and on the hands as well. And with this technique you might need to go back and forth just a little bit uh, between the orc skin and the gravelord gray to get the the blend that you want and the colors where you'd like them. Uh, certain areas didn't meet uh, as well as I thought they would so just going in and uh, meeting it with the other color and really blending those two together really helps uh, add some definition to certain areas. As you can see here, I'm going to go ahead and add just a little bit of Gravelord Grey to the rim of the spine here. And that just kind of marries the two colors together, blends everything in a little bit, and uh, doesn't create such a harsh transition. And again, like I said earlier, we're basically just doing a reverse blend technique of the same thing that we did earlier on, just uh, with the orc skin into the Gravelord Grey rather than the other way around. Um, we'll go ahead and give this some time to dry, and uh, since this is a bigger model, kind of more of a character model, uh, we'll go ahead and bust out the airbrush and do a little bit more detail than we did on the Neverborn Sorrows that we had done uh, uh, last week. So we'll go ahead and, oh, before we do that, we'll go ahead and hit the face here um, with a light layer of the Gravelord Grey. This will match the uh, flesh tone of the model, I guess, if that's what you want to call it. And with this step, we're really just looking for the skin of the model, basically. Uh, just try to avoid the eye sockets, the hair, um, and the mouth for the most part. Mm -hmm. 
And as you can see with that blend, we have a very nice transition between colors, uh, between the Gravelord Grey and the Orc skin. So we're going to go ahead and move over to Green Skin and Matte White from the Air Paint line. And we're going to go ahead and just add a little bit of detail and highlight to uh, the model here on the hands, the spine, and the lower part of the magic part of the body, I guess. Uh, this will just add a little bit of highlight interest and uh, really just kind of marry the blend together that we created earlier with the speed paints. Um, this is a great way to add a little bit of pop to your model. Uh, if you're decently okay with aiming your airbrush, um, you can pull this off quite, quite easily. And with this technique, I'm just doing short spurts of paint through my airbrush. Uh, I'm not trying to apply too much. I don't want to ruin the uh, color of the Gravelord Grey that we have plain on its own. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Try to aim your airbrush and angle the model so that you don't spray it directly on it. And we'll go ahead and move down the green area here as well, just adding a little bit more uh, bright color and highlight to the model. And of course, take your time with this as always, and you'll be left with a pretty decent result. Uh, as, as in my case here, I was pretty happy with how that turned out. Um, I'll definitely be using that quite more often on my character models and larger models in the future. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and move back into some of the detail on the model here. So we'll go ahead and cover up all the hair with our Grim Black, uh, using this pretty thick, trying to get a nice uh, variation of color in the hair. So uh, using one pretty thick coat, uh, pretty even thick coat, so that will cover the majority of the hair and we will also be able to uh, have a little bit of detail and variation of color on the hair. And with that, uh, the majority of the model is done now, so we'll go ahead and just move into the simple details on the face. Starting off with the inside of the mouth, we'll move over to Blood Red, and we'll just go ahead and fill the uh, open mouth here, trying to leave the teeth white still. We'll go ahead and do a different color for those. So just try to fill the inside of the mouth as best as you can without hitting the teeth. And if you do, just go ahead and bust out some matte white and fix those mistakes real quick. And moving into the teeth here, we'll go ahead and cover those with Crusader Skin. Uh, I actually waited for the first layer to dry and put a second layer on just to really add a dirty look to the teeth of this model. Moving over our last couple of steps here, we're going to switch over into the detail of the eyes of the model. And for this, we're going to switch into matte black uh, from the regular acrylic line. And we'll go ahead and just cover in the entirety of the eyes here with this color. Uh, on the unit card, it has some basically just black eyes with green pupils, so that's what we're going to go for here. Uh, just be very careful, take a very uh, fine brush with a fine point to it, and we'll just go ahead and dot the eyes until the entirety of the eye socket is covered. And once we are done with that, we'll switch over to some matte white with an even finer brush here, and we'll go ahead and just very carefully dot the eyes as best as we can here. Uh, this is actually one of my better uh, eye jobs on any model here. I'm kind of very pleased with how this one turned out. Uh, usually they end up very cockeyed and I have to uh, end up fixing it over and over again until I get it perfect. So uh, cheers to this one being very quick and easy. Pretty much what you saw on camera is uh, all I did to it. And uh, yeah, I was very pleased with that. So um, always practice your eyes on larger models. And with that last tip, that'll bring us to the end of the video here, guys. Again, thanks for watching. Uh, be sure to check out the top link in the description to take part in the giveaway attached to this video. Again, all of our giveaways end on the following Sunday of the week that they premiere now. So keep that in mind. You guys have plenty of time to come back to these videos uh, and enter in all those giveaways before they end. So as always, guys, thanks for watching and happy wargaming.